Hello, everybody, and <laughs> welcome to Speak Out, the Outright Podcast. I am your host, JQ. You can use any pronouns for me. I'm Emma. I use they, she, and he pronouns. I'm Ava. I use they, she. <laughs> uh, also, Ava has made good on their promise slash threat to acquire a banjo. <laughs> the whole time that they're uh, playing. This has made a lot of like people very side. angry and has been widely <laughs> regarded as a bad pe- move. Hold on, that's not a majority vote. <laughs> oh, come on, let me quote Douglas Adams in peace. Oh, uh, no. Democracy. <laughs> what are you supposed to do Look, about this? <laughs> okay, it's working. My computer's working. Yeah, I can see a lot of people are very angry about this banjo. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> am I the asshole? Okay, Welcome to Am I the Asshole. I usually want to have to like answer yes. Wall for when we say <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Answer yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, owning a banjo is a great predictor of being an asshole. Damn. That's rough. <laughs> no, I, I think that hating banjos is a good predictor. Well, luckily, um, I like banjos, just not right next to me. Fine. They're very loud. I'll go behind you. <laughs> Oh. Bet. <laughs> Man, you should have like, one chord, huh? <laughs> I feel like at any second you're going to ask me to draw you like one of my French girls. <laughs> yeah, if I know how to draw it. Yeah. Behind- oh, you had a banjo behind you. Yeah, it was better. Now you need a banjo on your right. I feel like the one you. ear is really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> like just left hand banjo. <laughs> We're like five minutes in, we haven't read yeah. a single Reddit post. <laughs> Alright, am I the asshole? Okay, yeah. here. Should we just go down the line or yeah, do we want to? Let's just go down the line. Because okay. I really want I really want to know, am I the asshole for quote queer baiting? Yeah. Unquote. <laughs> okay, here, I'll read this one. Um <laughs> says oh, it gives you a little label too. Like I yeah, didn't know that you could do that. We get to make our own dis- determination uh, yeah. about whether or not this is an asshole. I say yeah for every single one of them. Yep. Everyone if you're always. on Reddit, uh, <laughs> oh, danger. Oops. <laughs> um, and you own a banjo. <laughs> you... I think that's. I am on Reddit and I do own a banjo. Damn, double Two whammy. risk factors right there. Like a struggle, shit. Um, <laughs> okay, this says, Am I the asshole for quote queer baiting? Unquote. So I. Tw- this one has my name in it also, which is a little inconvenient. But uh, so I 22F. Are, no, you're 21, right? Yeah, correct. L, um, I, 22F, went to a bar with two of my friends, uh, Leah, 23F, and Emma, 22F. Yesterday, BTW, these are fake names. We decided to go to the bar to just have a fun time and hang out with each other. Read more slowly. Oh, before I got to the actual story, I would first like to tell you that Leah is bisexual, so that later on it makes sense. So we arrive and we go to the bar to pick up some drinks. When we were waiting for the bartender to make the drinks, a random guy started to talk to me. Uh, he started to introduce himself, and I wasn't really feeling it, but I decided to introduce myself as well anyway to be nice. And, of course, he started asking me if I was single or if I was looking for- oh, or if I was looking for anything right now. Uh, and I told him that I wasn't. When he heard that, he started to shift the conversation, but then quickly started to ask me again. I told him no again, and he kept pestering me, asking the same exact questions. I think it was about three times in where he kept asking me, so I literally just cut him off and told him that I wasn't straight and that I wasn't into guys, especially him. He said, oh, and then finally walked off. Uh, My friends were behind me this entire, quote, conversation, unquote, and they heard everything. I was relieved he finally just left me alone, and I turned around to see my friends and to see if our drinks were, were ready. When I turned around, I saw Leah's face. She looked annoyed and also somewhat angry. I thought that she was just annoyed that the drinks were taking a long time, so I didn't think anything of it. After we went outside to wait for our separate Ubers, we all said goodbye. Emma was the first one to leave, and it was just me and Leah. When I saw my Uber, I told her goodbye, but she didn't respond. She instead told me that it was that I was disrespectful for saying that I wasn't straight and that I was queer baiting just so I could get that guy to leave me alone. After she said that, she walked away from me, even though her Uber wasn't even there yet. Uh, later that night, I sent to the group chat that I thought tonight was fun, but only Emma responded. Leah is typically, oh, typically the person to respond very quickly, but she didn't. So I think she's ignoring me for that incident. I feel bad on how I handled the situation, but I felt like that was the only way for him to actually leave me alone. Oh my god, leave me alone. Then she says, am I the asshole here? 
I'm gonna be real. This is a bad look. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like claiming a marginalized identity when you don't actually hold that identity is uh, problematic on a couple levels. Obviously, I'm sympathetic to the person who wrote this post because when someone like won't stop hitting on you, even though you've made it very clear that you don't want them to, that is a very disempowering situation. Uh, but I feel like lying about being queer is still not cool. Um, lying in general isn't great, and specifically, like, positioning yourself as a marginalized identity is for personal benefit is kind of weird. Like, if you don't have the struggle of being queer all the time, maybe don't try and use it for your own incidental gain. I think if men are not leaving you alone and are being shitty, I feel like you can say just about anything to them. As a lesbian, I also don't... I, I don't know. I feel like I personally give you permission to to use that, but I respect the wishes of the queer community if they disagree. Real. I also okay. kind of feel like um, uh, not so much using it for personal gain, but like to get out of a potentially unsafe situation, if this was that. I also... I mean, sure, but, like, what is claiming that you're queer going to make a situation less dangerous for you? That's fair. Like, My only thing, yeah, I I do think that there is another way that she could have done it, which is to say I have a boyfriend, because that also usually gets guys who are not fucking leaving you alone to leave you alone. Yeah. Um, Being a lesbian often doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. That's actually entirely <laughs> fair, yeah. Yeah, like, that's, I've never had that work. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, 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 damn. Ah, uh, not fun. So I just feel like it's a bad strategy, um, and also kind of, uh, kind of a dick move. It's, it's, uh, for me, this is, this is asshole. Uh, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. JP like, says, don't be a dick. There I do go. say don't be a dick. <laughs> Big stamp. Don't be a dick. Big stamp. <laughs> big stamp. Is that a dick stamp where it says dick, or is it a pictogram? It's of a not dick? a picture of a penis. Well, what the fuck? It should be. It says don't be a dick, not. <laughs> you literally peruse. said dick stamp. Dick stamp with like the, the no symbol, yes, the no smoke. Except instead of a cigarette, it's a dick. Okay, yeah. yeah, there you go. Good one. Okay, are we on to the next one? Yes. Yeah. You want me to read this one? Yeah. Am I the asshole for not wanting my girlfriend to have a queer platonic partner? Sorry, I found myself in a pretty odd situation. For background context, I've been dating my girlfriend for around two years. For the first year or so, all was normal and our relationship was totally great. And then she went on a hormonal birth control pill. Her sex drive plummeted, and around six months ago, we had a talk where she confided that she was really uncomfortable doing sexual things anymore, and that she was only doing them at all because she felt like she had to for my sake. I apologized, since obviously I didn't want her to feel that way, and we've been pretty much celibate since then. I told her we shouldn't only be doing sexual things if she was interested in- I told her we should only be doing sexual things if she was interested in doing them. She started seeing a counselor for that two months ago, and I'm hopeful that in time things will return to normal there. In addition to the above, I felt like our relationship has been lacking in emotional intimacy for a while. Two nights ago, I decided to try to bring up how I was feeling to her, and told her that at times it has felt more like she has been my roommate than my girlfriend, and that I'd really appreciate it if we could try to spend more time together. She was receptive, and the talk felt pretty productive, so we set a date for the two of us this Thursday. Afterwards, though, she told me that a friend of hers asked her on Monday if she would be interested in the two of them being queer platonic partners, and she asked me, asked me for my permission to say yes. I asked her what that meant, since I had never heard of the term before, and she described it as a platonic relationship with a lot more of an emotional commitment. I told her honestly that from how it sounded, I wasn't comfortable with it. She told me that she might be explaining it badly, and that she'd appreciate it if I could Google the term and read up about it, and then talk to her again about it. I did, and Google described it pretty much the same way that she had described it. We talked last night, and I tried to explain that I didn't mind if she had close, emotionally involved friendships, since that's none of my business, but that choosing to label it with a relationship word felt like it was crossing a line for me, especially since my girlfriend is bisexual. I also said that I was feeling kind of insecure in our relationship at the moment, especially because of the intimacy issues I raised the other night, 
and hearing from her right after I talked to her about that, that she wanted to enter into a deep emotional commitment with someone who wasn't me, felt kind of disheartening. The conversation ended with her agreeing not to say yes to her friend. Am I being the asshole here? I know there's some aspect to this that's founded in my being insecure, but I'm not sure if I'm being an asshole about it, or if it's reasonable to be uncomfortable with labeling a friendship that way. I just think that any time that there's a situation, there's one of these situations where somebody is like, somebody asked me my opinion on this, and I gave them an answer that they didn't like, you're just probably not, I mean, well, okay, not every situation, but most of them, it's kind of just like, well, if they asked and you said no, then like, that's kind of that. And what was the point in asking if you only wanted one answer, I guess? I don't know if I'm explaining that well. Oh, you are. You okay, are. yeah, that one. So I say no! <laughs> <laughs> Not the asshole, yeah. I feel like this is kind of a shitty situation, but I don't feel like anyone's really... This yeah. is like a no one's the asshole here for exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not really the girlfriend's fault that she doesn't have much of a libido anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not really her... Well, I feel like I feel emotionally neglected is impossible to determine anything from from a Reddit post by someone I don't know at all. Uh, that's an incredibly complicated and very nuanced situation, so I can't pass judgment on that. Although we are here on the Judgment Podcast. <laughs> We're on the Judgment Podcast! Judgment! Oh. Banjo Judgment Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the banjo. I'm just going to put a banjo in the thumbnail. I'm just going to put um, a banjo duh. with eyes. And it's going to have a big arrow that says asshole. <laughs> this is the banjo of Judgment. The fourth character on the podcast. <laughs> no, but honestly, I don't know. I, I think that these two just aren't working out. And they're trying to make it work too much. And I feel like... If you're not, like, already established polyamorous and you go searching for additional relationships, it might... I mean, may, sometimes not, but I think it might be a sign that she's just not happy in her current relationship, but doesn't want to leave and kind of wants to maintain the status quo. But it seems like neither of them are really happy. And, yeah, I think she should go have her queer platonic partner, but not be with this guy if they're, like, lacking int intimacy in the relationship. Yeah. That is entirely fair. Yeah. Because I know that for... Like, okay, my understanding is that queer platonic partner for some people is, like, a really, like, for, like, like, asexual or romantic people especially is, like, sometimes, like, not a replacement, but, like, a version of a relationship that sort of is similar to or, like, in parallel with having, like, a spouse. Like, someone that you know that y you are planning on being with, like, your entire life. Is that correct? Yeah, although it's... By, it's by necessity kind of a multifaceted, mul like, multifarious. I love the word multifarious. Um, it's, like, almost a fluid term. Um, but I definitely think that if you're coming at it from a heterosexual monogamous perspective that, like, doesn't have a lot of room for uh, very, like, fluid or complicated relationship types, right. then... Oh, like, platonic spouse is an okay analog. Uh. True. I mostly picked out this one because I also think that people in the comments were coming at it from a, like, non-queer lens. Like, people were saying, she's asking permission to emotionally cheat on you, though it's not cheating if you agree that's okay. That sounds like you two are really compatible. I don't agree with asking permission to emotionally cheat on you. Like, I think that they're, like, two different concepts like this relationship that she's in and this really this queer platonic relationship that she is perhaps wanting to be in are like okay, different I, like i don't I know I, I just feel like people saying like emotionally cheat like i don't know emotionally cheating is such a it's stupid so dumb oh my okay, god because it's Every either <laughs> she's providing emotional labor to someone oh. else which is supposed to be your sole domain mm -hmm. or she she wants emotional intimacy with someone else, although it's clearly stated to be platonic. Yeah. But that's in not allowed. <laughs> right. Because. Yeah. I feel like every time someone says emotionally cheat on, they just want ownership over their partner, and that's what they think monogamy is. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. You don't have a sole claim to someone's, uh, emo like, time and caring yeah. and uh, even emotional labor. Real. 
Oh my god, so oh. more people are saying yeah, emotional know. cheating. I literally only saw this one and I was like, that's interesting. That could be an interesting conversation, but... Oh. If someone agrees with you, uh, Ava, sounds like... Well, okay, it sounds like they're saying it in like a... In like a not queer way. It sounds like your girlfriend is already halfway out of the relationship and just staying with you until she figures out what you really want. That's... You're being, oh, also, you're being okay, dumb. also annoying the person who's like, uh, queer platonic partners, uh, that's only for ace arrow people. Right. Uh, well, so I guess this is primarily a yeah. form of commitment, so at least they're recognizing that. But then it goes on to be like, if you're in a romantic relationship, there's no reason for you to have a queer platonic oh, partner. Yeah. Like, okay. shut up. How about shut up? <laughs> yeah. Also, they didn't say per se right. No, they so, did not spell per se you're right. You're wrong. L. Eh. A bozo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to get a restaurant that doesn't sell vegetarian alternatives to agree to make you a veggie burger when you're not even close to what? The thing is, <laughs> I skipped most of that comment and then went to that. This is, okay, Anyways, also it's so odd. Got real, like. <laughs> what were you saying? Oh, it's so odd because like, would you expect someone in a queer platonic partnership to be like, no, you can't date someone? No. Real. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on the terms of your queer That's platonic true. That partnership. True. I mean, like, that might mean it's an exclusive thing, like you're just life partners. And, yeah. I don't know. This is true. So, this is why I advocate for relationship agreements. Exactly. Like a prenup. Literally, like like the relationship. Like a prenup. Like the agreement that Sheldon has on the Big Bang Theory. I, no, not the Big Bang Theory. I literally, yeah, no, not the Big Bang Theory. I'm just using it because, like, that's the only way people colloquially know what these are. I literally told my girlfriend, if we ever move in together, we are having a contract. We need a contract. Yeah. I think explicit communication is never a bad thing. We definitely. That is like, very stressful, though. It fucking is. It is stressful, <laughs> yeah. Communication sucks, but <laughs> if you leave dirty dishes in the sink, it'll be a lot worse for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably true. You're gonna play the banjo in their general direction. Exactly. I'll play the banjo in any I don't exactly. even leave dirty dishes in the sink. You don't even have a sink. You don't uh, have yeah. a sink. That <laughs> I do have that a sink. It's a, it's a bathroom sink. Yeah, exactly. Do you have dishes? Uh huh. Silverware. <laughs> Silverware doesn't count. Do you even wash them? Yes. Oh my god. You think I don't wash my silverware? What the fuck? Literally, some people in the dorms don't wash their silverware. No, because I heard a story from someone who I will not say. I'll tell you guys afterwards okay. because it's somebody that you both know and I think they'd be fun with it. But um, their roommate does not wash the dishes with soap only rinses them with water and, like, scrubs off, and doesn't use a sponge either, like, scrubs off, like, the dirty parts, like, with her fingers. This roommate also, um, they're a shoes household because they just, like, that was what worked best for everybody involved. Yeah. Um, but the roommate walks around, like, with not shoes, barefoot. Wow. Her feet, the bottoms of her feet are, like, visibly dirty, and then she proceeds to, like, you can, she, <laughs> this person said, quote, you can see where she was sitting that day, because there's a dirty no. mark on the couch, and also, they caught her, like, like, scraping off the bottoms of her feet on the coffee no. table. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> wild. Can't eat at everyone's house. Can't eat at everyone's house, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, no. Do it in a bunch of different keys. No, 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 no. Ooh, that was an interesting Just one. Keep going. <laughs> very Just keep jazzy. Going. Very, very jazzy. Banjo jazz. Literally, no. Absolutely, dirt. Dirt is an absolute no. Yeah, no. That's a no for me. Oh, I don't my know. Phone is so warm. There are people who genuinely believe that, like the soap. When they wash their hair, cleans their body, and those people fucking oh, scare me. Oh yeah, like people who like don't wash their legs when I they shower. I don't wash. Or... You don't need to wash your legs. Okay. What are you I'm doing? I'm sorry. To your do you legs? not wash your legs? What do you do to your legs that gets I them s dirty? Sweat, like on a regular basis. Dust, dirt, germs. 
Also, you know Taylor Swift doesn't wash her legs, so I'm I, somewhat okay with it. But also, <laughs> that makes me want to wash your, my legs more, honestly. But I'm, I'm not, still not gonna. Say, that's your. That's your. Uh, <laughs> I like that. That's your like baseline standard. Yeah, but you really yeah, just no. like are out here like my shins yes. have got to be yeah, sparkling. Yeah, I get like sweaty sometimes. <laughs> on your shins? Yeah. Yes. What? My knees. My what sweat gets on your shins. My knees don't sweat. Because because do you ever move like faster Jake than a walk? Victorious. Bicycle. Okay, yeah, you sweat when you're bicycling. We should do it every sweat. time I walk up the fucking hill. Like, we should do an outright gym day. No. I don't think I would be good at that, but I'm that would be, sure. It would be fun, though. We could, we could do some stuff. Oh. do with Ultimate Frisbee. If anyone on the so podcast much. wants to join the outright flag football team... <laughs> you think they're watching? Message me in the comments. Oh, wait, we're doing flag football? Or kickball, but we seem to have more interest in flag football. Are you joining our flag football team? I would be team? more interested in flag football than kickball. <laughs> The yes? No. <laughs> it's really fun. It's swag. It's really cool. It's really gay. It's really fun. It's swag. Sometimes I have to use my inhaler because I got too out of breath when I walked up the hill. <laughs> then you'll be a kicker! Yay! Please don't make me do sports. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it as an art. <laughs> Okay, Think I know. Think of it as an art. <laughs> the art of football. Okay, I assume you. My church for the annoying holidays will do this thing where they like sing the, like, the bit right before communion, and it's always like, the. Wait, okay. Have you seen the John Mulaney bit? That's like the bread of God is bread. <laughs> that's yeah, what I feel like I we're like doing right now. <laughs> it is what we're doing right now. <laughs> I think it quiets the banjo if you put like a finger or two here. That makes sense, because like that is what's making that's it the loud. That's the resonant part. Yeah. Wait, what if I put more fingers there? I feel like that was hornier than I intended. What? <laughs> I feel like that was hornier than I intended. Oh, yeah. This part is vibrating, so. The best episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. I forgot to wear the pirate outfit. I was considering it. That's Fuck. fine. We can do a later episode yeah. where you wear a pirate outfit. Oh my god. Based as hell. I went to play Catan with some friends yesterday and I wore a full pirate costume. Oh, yeah, brother. And my roommate was like, why does the room smell? Like, what happened? And I was like, oh, I was sealing ribbons with a lighter. Mm. Uh, hmm. If you can I smell it, you should smell. probably open a window, though, that you get, like, fucking Fumes microplastics. Oh, God. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I love the banjo accompaniment to everything yeah, you say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything I say is more interesting with the banjo. Real. Should we read the next one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Did we wait? What, what was our determination? Was it asshole or no? Oh, uh, no. I say not no. Not asshole. No asshole! Not asshole! Not asshole. Yeah! Asshole-less. Am I the asshole Shit. for not telling my family that my husband is transgender? My husband is a transgender man, therefore he cannot get me pregnant. We agreed before we even got married that we wanted to adopt, and we're a couple years into the process right now, and probably a couple of years of being able to adopt kids. We told my parents that we want to adopt but have never told them he is trans because we didn't think they'd accept it. They are aware of our adoption plans and have asked us if we've seen a fertility specialist when we said we couldn't have kids. And we said we haven't seen one because we so wanted to long. adopt. For our anniversary a couple of days ago, my parents told us that they've prepaid for a consultation at a fertility clinic. They have put down 200 pounds just for the initial consultation and another 120 pounds for a semen culture. I already have a son from a previous relationship, so they know I'm not the problem. They've prepaid for it and sent us an invoice from the clinic confirming that the consultation test and test have both been paid for. They've also paid for train tickets, 108 pounds, for us to get to the clinic. My husband then decided to come out to them as transgender and explain exactly why he couldn't have a semen culture done. No semen. Mm -hmm. Edit, to be clear, he chose to tell them the truth and told them himself. I didn't out him. 
Since telling them, all hell has broken loose. They're furious we didn't tell them sooner, said they have a right to know who they were allowing into the family and are fuming that they've put down money for a consultation and test we won't be having. They want an apology for not telling them sooner and a refund on the £428 they paid out, as they say they wouldn't have put money down if they'd known we already knew exactly why we couldn't have kids the old-fashioned way, as my dad put it. I said we didn't ask them to put that money down and it was disrespectful of them to do so when they know we want to adopt, and it shouldn't matter to them who whether my husband is cis or trans. However, they feel they are owed an apology for hiding the truth and expect us to refund the £420 they paid out as they would not have paid it out if they knew the truth. We might, we think we might be the asshole because they were coming from a good place and honestly, we probably should have told them sooner. Are we the asshole for not telling and refunding them? No. No. <laughs> I love asshole. it when there's an obvious answer. No. Like, you're absolutely right. They didn't, add, they should have respected your decision, even if they were coming from a good place. That doesn't change the fact that they're trying to go directly against your wishes, whether or not, as they said, whether or not the husband was cis or trans. They said that they wanted to adopt, and there's no reason that you get any say in that. That's a weird gift, too. And 428 also, yeah, that yeah, is a also gift. That's so true. 428 pounds? That's like 600 bucks. That's, yeah, that's like, a lot of money. That's like an Xbox. Who And who would who would rather have... Who, who said they didn't want had to have kids that way would rather have fertility treatment than an Xbox? Real. <laughs> like, I like that reasoning, yeah. Don't be a dick. Don't be transphobic. Mm-hmm. Buy Xboxes for the people you love if you have six hundred dollars laying around. There's no way anyone can hear anything you say when you play really? the banjo. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, well, buy Xboxes, not fertility treatments for trans people. Buy two banjos. <gasps> yes! <laughs> buy a banjo! Banjo! <laughs> Yeah, but you can't buy half. You can't buy half a banjo. We need a banjo. I like how you can see the sound goes all the way up to red on the audio capture every time you see that. Uh, can we make it go past red? No, red. Right. That's as high as it goes. <laughs> red means you're peaking the microphone. Oh. That's fine. Oopsie. I throw a hard limiter on the audio so that people don't actually blow their eardrums out. <laughs> I think they should blow their eardrums out. Though. Yeah, we take the limiter off. <laughs> take the limiter off just for the episode. Turn it to 11. Yeah. Bando time. The thing is, I want people to enjoy listening to the podcast. No. And not to, like, start bleeding from the ears and no, then sue us. us and us only. Anyways, that one was easy. That was a good one. No, keep doing that picking. I just really like minor minor chords. chords. Yeah. (laughs) I just think they're neat. I feel like the mechanisms probably uses a lot of minor chords. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know, know, maybe. I don't know. to the Black Ross incident for the first time recently, and I was like, I'm so mad at how I, like, know that it's going to end terribly, and I'm still like, no! It it's terribly. sad! <laughs> <laughs> I did it while I was cleaning my boots, and I was, like, fully weeping by the end. <laughs> it's really good, though. Real. I feel like it's not my favorite also of their albums. I over the summer. But, or uh, fucking over the spring break. I feel like it's not my favorite of their albums. But, Which one is your favorite? Uh, probably Ulysses Dies at Dawn. I still like that one. I've like only listened to two of them, but yeah, but they're two that good one's ones. Still my favorite. Yeah. But I will say I really like um, Blood and Whiskey off of High Noon oh, true. over Camelot. We are oh, talking, true, true. We're talking about uh, how fuck uh, a band <laughs> that does concept albums where they retell different myths um, in sort of a steampunky way. Steampunk and they're really way. good. Ooh. And they're called The Mechanisms. Yeah. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard that. Because it's from you. Yeah. You've t- um, talked about them before on the podcast. And they're really good. And also uh, make me very sad. But they're, it's like a very satisfying resolution to the stories. That's I re- true. Re- that's, I feel like one of the reasons I really like Ulysses Dies at Dawn is because the ending is so thematically satisfying. Um, it's a story about freedom and also about death. 
Yay. I recommend. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking got a banjo in it. Does sure. It does That's have a great. banjo. I'm sure it's got yeah. a banjo That's in great. it. That's great. I think They've I got, Okay, even if they don't have a banjo, they have like huge banjo energy. Like they definitely have both a fiddle oh. and a harmonica. Yeah, exactly. So. I, what, like my favorite song off of, um, what's the, what's the. It's Hanked Man oh, wait. Russ. Yeah, Skin and Bone one? definitely Can't has Skin and Bone definitely has a banjo. I'm marking them down as confirmed banjo. If I could choose a power, I'd just be able to summon a banjo because they're so big <laughs> to carry around. That's, that's the power you choose? <laughs> they're so you big. You wouldn't even like extrapolate that to other objects. You'd be no. like, just only banjo. banjo. What if I can summon a banjo and an and, and like a piccolo clarinet that are like this big and they're tiny? But wouldn't you also like to be it. able to summon like delicious fresh baked bread or something? Bread and banjos. Yes. Yeah, mm. So then I just every time I need to summon a banjo, any, I don't any to object carry. that starts with a B. Yes. Bogo spented. <laughs> Bitch slaps. <laughs> just someone just gets bitch slapped like twenty times. You guys summon it. <laughs> okay. Billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you just get if. if Surely like, you could just summon <laughs> billion anything then. Beans. Yeah, I just don't think Beans. I'm the kind of person who should be allowed to be a billionaire. I just I I don't think good things would come of that. Like I don't think most people who are billionaires have good things come of it. Yeah, but I know. Most people who are billionaires got there by being evil, whereas if you just got magic powers through no virtue or fault of your own, then you wouldn't be evil. But That's I'd be real. a dick about it. Like, I'd have a fun <laughs> don't, be, don't be a dick. Easy. <laughs> I like how you're just deciding now. You're just like, yeah, Actually, I would I be. I'd choose to be a dick. I, I don't have the emotional willpower to not be a dick dude, about I'd just this. be sailing like, around on, like, an electric yacht with, dude, like, a bunch of Dude, just give, like, $990 million of it to, like, the UN to solve world hunger or something, and then buy a boat with the other $10 million. Go. Well, I'd want to set up, like, a 401k. Okay, set up a 401k with one million of it and buy a boat with the other, with two and million of it. And then I want a PhD. It, and have seven million dollars <laughs> oh, to live on you... while you get your PhD. Wait, what are you going to get a PhD in? Um, if someone gave me a billion dollars, <laughs> fucking, I would, of course I would get a PhD. What would you get a PhD in? Um, I, I don't fucking know. Thanks, Pirate <laughs> sexuality. <laughs> Dude, did I send you that thesis about, um, naval... Homosexuality. What? Sharing. No, no, what? you did not. Okay. Where is this podcast? Yeah, I'll find it for you. Uh, wait, thesis? Which yeah, say? it's a thesis. Oh, it's that's like great. two, like three hundred pages, probably, maybe two hundred. Um, oh wow! I feel like I saw it in a Tumblr post, and I was like, Ava would love this. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, I would just like go to a program. <laughs> it's that not would about let me... pirates, though. It's about the navy specifically. The, Brit- the British okay. one. They're basically. The oh, they were like pirate enemies. Uh, well, like they were also pirate celebrities. supporters, though. They Romeo literally, like, were the reason the Calico Jack got sentenced to death. Yeah, but they also yeah. provided letters of mark I mean, that legalized piracy during, shit, the War of Spanish Succession. Come Am on. I the asshole? British Come Navy. On. Yes. <laughs> totally. As- asshole. asshole! There you go. Put the stamp. We need War of Spanish Succession, pretty funny, though. Assholes. <laughs> Can we let the Spanish be French? Answer. Well, yes, but actually no. <laughs> Fair enough. Also, assholes. The Spanish, or, uh, yeah, both. <laughs> I don't know why I asked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You should have brought this to The Spanish or the reading. French? The banjo? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't play the banjo. <laughs> to convince them? Yeah. Just as a prop, though. Like I can't play- move? what if they asked me to play the banjo and I'm like, no, this is just for style. Sorry, I'm on rest. A banjo's a great- <laughs> a banjo's a great gender-neutral accessory. It is- Strap it on your back. Unsheave it. Pull out a sick riff. I need a banjo and- oh my god, do you know there's a pigeon rescue? Um, in SoCal, where you can, like, rescue a pigeon, and, like, you get, like, you can adopt a pigeon. You Imagine if you just, like, it. a pigeon. I used, to, I used to want a bird as a kid. Like, not, like, a bird that you can buy. Like, a bird off of the street. Yeah, yeah, that's the best kind. <laughs> I did not want that. I wanted a bird you could buy. No, I used to catch no. them them in, like, like, Petco. They had them in Petco, and I would just, like, stand there looking at the birds. So true. And they also had a chinchilla, which sometimes they would let mm. you pet, and, like... 
but probably that was unethical for Petco to have a chinchilla, but I was like seven, so I didn't know what ethics were. I just knew <laughs> I that I liked to pet the chinchilla. Were. They actually taught us about ethics in first grade at my what school. What the fuck? Oh. Okay. It was a little symbol They taught like me a how to like use scissors. <laughs> <laughs> my school is fucking weird, okay? I don't know. We learned about all these like principles, and it was like phonics ethics. <laughs> I could barely learn phonics. You really went to school in California. <laughs> Yeah. I went to school in California. Still. <laughs> they didn't teach me ethics. They taught me about, like, Native Americans. I learned clarinet, Native Americans, ethics. I think they did not accurately teach me about Native Americans, probably. No, they did not do it accurately. I never said they did it well. Yeah. I feel like they did an okay job, honestly. Yeah. I went to a school that was good at Native Americans. <laughs> and bad at ethics. Bad at ethics. Bad at ethics. <laughs> I don't think they taught us about ethics. Like, they weren't, like, Emmanuel Kant <laughs> said this... <laughs> But they Emmanuel Kant. But Joe. It's, I'm in my second Kant class. Kant class. Yeah, he is definitely an asshole. Mm, <laughs> asshole. Asshole. Should we read the next one? No, we should talk about how Emmanuel Kant sucks. <laughs> yeah, let's read the next one. <laughs> Why do you think he we sucks? We could also do that. Um. He does have some holes in his argument. About... I had to listen to my friend ex- uh, try and explain how much. His, he hated um, Kantian metaphysics because they just made no sense. And they don't so, make no sense. No, they really made no sense. He just made like random ass leaps in logic. That's like, you know. Have you read the works of Anselm? Anselm of Canterbury. No. Okay. Read on. Read all of Anselm no. and then read Kant again and then let Hear me know. Hear me out. I won't do that. <laughs> okay. I have so much reading to do that I actually have to do. We should- I have to do reading this quarter because I'm taking comps classes and not MIMG classes. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? I actually have to read? What the hell? At least you don't have to do math. Math is worse. No, math I, pre- I prefer math, actually. Is the asshole. I would, I would minor in math. What? I would do it. That's terrible. Then like why are you a comms major? Because I oh, also okay, want then. to do that. Maybe you just need to like fewer things. People no. tell me that a lot. I would too. also minor in professional writing. The fuck. Ooh, that'd be fun. I would also run minor in LGBTQ studies. You should just start yeah. collecting minors. Stay an extra year. Three yeah, minors. Yeah. Three minors. <laughs> Three minors. One year. Speed run. Um, you could do it. I could do it. I bet you could take five classes at once if you didn't have anything else going on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can do four classes, and I have other stuff going on. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. You can maybe do six classes if you're really crazy. Absolutely not. Okay, that might be... That might be... Then you might run into the problem of, like, can you physically fit six classes in your schedule? you could. You could. I can barely do three. Three is, like, my... I did four once. That's fair. Or twice. I did four twice. My fourth was Spanish, though. That was not a good fourth. Yeah, no, taking a language class when you have to focus on other things is not great. It was at 8 a.m. Oh, oh, God! It was a, no wonder you were struggling the fuck! Not a slay. Not a slay. I took Spanish over the summer, and it was the only thing I was doing, so... At that I time. I took AP French in high school. So true. My high school did not have French. We didn't we have had AP Mandarin, French. and we had Spanish, and that was it. We had Spanish, French, Mandarin, Mandarin and Japanese. Damn, true. That's kind of fun. We just had Spanish and French and ASL, I think. At some point, we got ASL. Where are you from, by the way? Uh, the San Fernando Valley. Okay, yeah, that... I mean, I was from the Bay Area, so... Um, oh, so people actually speak Mandarin. Yeah. There. Okay. Mandarin no, and Japanese were mostly classes... Okay, well, Japanese was kind of 50-50 between weebs and, like, native speakers, <laughs> but Chinese was majority native speaker, I would say. Yeah, Spanish was a lot of native speakers. French was people who knew Spanish too well to keep taking it. Um... So then no. they chose Damn. to French, because once you know Spanish, French is, like, not French, terrible. True, French yeah. was, like, two native speakers and the rest of us bozos. <laughs> Real. You had no Spanish? That's we had Spanish. Oh, you did. Okay. I just didn't take it. I took French. Oh. I had a friend, actually, who took German at a local community college because he was a native speaker. Oh. Red. And it's like, get, get that bread, dude. Yeah, exactly. Get that credit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read this. Okay. <laughs> this says, am I the asshole for telling my mom to remove slash change a tattoo? Uh, it says, I, 17, uh, FTM, am trans and came out to my family a few months ago. All in all, everyone has been supportive, although I believe my mom was a tiny bit bummed. She said she would always support me, though. She just needs time to process all of this, which is honestly painful, but not the reason why I'm here. 
My mom got a tattoo with my sister's name and my dead name after I was born. It's a huge tattoo with a unique design that incorporates her and my dead name. It covers most of her arm and she's really proud of it because my old sister designed it. I think I'm supposed to say older sister designed it and gifted it to her for her birthday. Obviously, constant, constantly seeing my dead name is kind of triggering to me. Therefore, I told her she needs to remove it. She seemed shocked and told me she's go she's too old for longer tattoo sessions. She hasn't gotten a tattoo in years because of that. Uh, she was also diagnosed with depression as oh and such and uses it as an excuse for not having the energy to change it anymore. I don't really believe her, but whatever. Um, <laughs> now she's often trying to cover it up with clothes, but I feel like it's not enough. Just the knowledge that that, uh, oh, the name is still there. It haunts me, but she refuses to change it. We had a lot of fights because of it, and she said that she is really trying to hide it, but it's a part of her body that she is in love with because there is so much history and love for her children in that tattoo. I can't really relate because I don't have any particularly significant tattoos. Now, my birthday was a few days ago, and some family came over, and the issue came up because my cousin was showing off her new tattoo, and someone asked about the dead name tattoo. My mom got uncomfortably silent and excused herself and went to the kitchen. So everyone started asking me what that was about, and I told them that I wanted her to remove the tattoo, but she doesn't want to. My sister also doesn't want her to because she believes it would look really awful since the entire design is attached to the names and the only way to cover it would just be to make her entire arm black. Anyway, I didn't plan for that reaction, but my cousin, who can relate a bit because she's queer, for some reason got furious and went after my mom and screamed at her for being so unsupportive and accused her of being transphobic, which I don't believe, although it was nice to see someone get angry about the tattoo because my cousin was finally saying some things I was feeling but didn't want to put into words. My mom then had a panic attack and left the house. She's now staying with my grandpa, and my dad and my sister are angry at me for making some of my family gang up on her. And it says, am I the asshole? And then there's an edit, and it says, I read most of your comments and tried apologizing to my mom, but she's currently... No contact. Oh, there you go. No contact. Uh, there is more stuff happening, especially with my cousin, but I don't know how updating works. I'll try to post one once I figure out how. And it says, P.S. I showed this to my sister as well, and she wants me to say thanks to you all, and she wholeheartedly agrees to everyone who says that I'm the asshole. Wow. A lot there. That was, <laughs> there was a lot happening there. Jesus. Damn. Um. That's tough. Yeah, that, that is tough. That's, yeah, that's just not a good situation to start off. Maybe just don't get tattoos of people's names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, t that's really tough, because a tattoo that requires a blackout is, like, a really intense yeah. Yeah, I also feel like tattoo process. I don't know what the tattoo looks like, but I feel like that's, like, if you get a good enough artist, then, like, you probably could figure out a way to do it, where it wouldn't have to be entire arm blacked out, you know? Like, unless the name is, like like that and that's like the entire tattoo that i feel like like if the de like the design incorporates the names but i feel like you can still like i don't know yeah like i feel like there's like other ways to work around it but the fact that the mom is like i don't think that i can get like a big tattoo anymore i feel like is a really important mitigating factor yeah, yeah. also like, that yeah oh no that's true that yeah that solution would not work yeah, yikes. That's also really expensive. Cover-up is so expensive, too. It's like... That's fair. That's a lot. It I seems like know. a really... Yeah, it seems like cover-up in particular would be, like, a very in-depth design, because you have to, like, work around it a lot. Like, you're not just designing something from scratch and, like, using that creative talent. You have to, like, think about it a lot. I don't know. It seems like a lot of work, so understandable why it'd be expensive. Also, like, painful. Like, I don't want tattoos, because they hurt. Um, I did not think that mine hurt that much, honestly. But okay, well, well, yeah. it, it's like here, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's here. It's not in like a painful spot, so that's probably why. Yeah, I'm like a little wimp. <laughs> that's um, entirely fair. <laughs> my sister has an ankle tattoo, which is Ooh, like damn. brother. Brother. What is it of? Ooh, brother. Um, it's of a dog that looks like our dog who passed uh, with a little birthday hat and a piece of cake. Oh, that's oh, so cute. Okay. It's really cute. She got it there so that she could hide it from my mom. True. Um, and now my mom is really paranoid that I'll have tattoos, which is, <laughs> like, paranoid. crazy. Yeah! Like, literally, when I was home for spring break multiple times, like, both parents were like, so do you have any tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> they, just they thought freak. you had a tattoo. Yeah, me. You're, like, the least likely person I would ever think to have a tattoo. Not the least. I could be, like, a Catholic priest or something. Wow. I, you'd, you'd be, like... You'd be like, oh, I'm am, down I, there, am I going to be here for three hours? I might miss my bedtime. <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> You're as 
response to my graduation party had me dying. Okay, Wait, what was look, the response? I was like, the type of people you invite to a party don't respect my early event. Except for, like, the type of like I was you like, I'm worried about getting home at a reasonable time because if it's one of Ava's parties, it's going to be going to like 2 a.m. or something. It's, it's during and the day. Metal, you didn't say that. You said come to a party in the valley. I also That's it. I also didn't realize it was during the day. It's during I the was day. I'm like, down though. It's not like a graduation rager. You s- Transports would be, be pro- logistics would be a problem, especially as I go to bed pretty early, and thus couldn't depend on a time when I'm back from the kinds of people likely to be at one of your parties. <laughs> Look, I didn't Damn, mean you really said to you're a out. fucking delinquent. <laughs> I didn't mean say you're a delinquent. I said I'm a sleepy well, baby. Well, <laughs> I'm a sleepy baby, and you st- stay out at frat parties. <laughs> Someone was recently told me they went to bed at 4 a.m. and I was like, where were you? And she was like, at, at home. And I was like, last time I went to bed at 4 a.m. I was out until 3 a.m. Like, who just stays Real. up till 4 a.m. for no Dude, reason? My roommate, That's kind of wild. Dude, my roommate basically became nocturnal over finals week. No. Like, I too. swear to God, I would wake up at 8 a.m. and he would go to bed at 9 a.m. No, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, like, for real. It was you crazy. You miss all the daylight. Yeah, but that was, that it worked for him. Theoretically. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, um, tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah, this first one says, gentle, you're the asshole, which I think is accurate, because they're fucking 17. Yeah. Um, and, like, obviously this is not a good situation in the first place, and there's other things happening. But definitely, like, saying that she has to, like, you know, making decisions about someone else's body is probably not really ever a good position to be in, mm-hmm. so. That's, but, but it does feel like the cousin is, like, more at fault. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like, um... Like, the original poster saying, like, that he wants the mom to change the tattoo isn't the greatest move in the world. No. But um, to then take his side unquestioningly and go yell at yeah. y- your the mom of your cousin? Yeah, but to go <laughs> yell at your aunt is just a wild yeah. thing in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and then also to do it like that is, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely that part. So, like, I feel like the original poster isn't, like, hugely in the right here. But I'm also not, like, go to his house with pitchforks, you know? Right, yeah. Not like, yeah, not like a terrible, irreparable asshole, but yeah. not... No, exactly. Especially with, like, those edits and the PS and stuff. Yeah. Like... But yeah, gently the asshole. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> gently yeah. the asshole. We all fuck up. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Especially when we're 17. Especially when you're fucking 17. I'm 19, Damn. and I expect to fuck up so much in the future. I'm 21, and I have confidence, 100%, that I will fuck up many times Me in the future. Too. So there you go. How much fucking nice. up can you do oh, before 10 p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> before 10 <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep coming back to this. So are you going to the fucking pirate party or not? Uh, yeah, are sure. You, it's okay, going to be okay. at, like, noon. <laughs> I'll go to the pirate party if it's at, like, noon. Fantastic. Yeah, it, this still, I, I don't, I'm kicking, fully kicking people out of my house by dusk. I oh, for sure. Like, I might. I don't... I'm not gonna kick people out, but, like, things are gonna end if you want to hang around. You probably can, but, like, you can also fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> My mom said I cannot do a PowerPoint. Aww. Why? I wanted to do a PowerPoint about the general history of the pirates and then have people do a cahoot on it. That sounds Dude, that fantastic. sounds rad. Right? That's okay. The part that you mom, do. if you're watching this, pirate... <laughs> PowerPoint. <laughs> Dear Ava's mom, Dear please Ava's mom. let me do a cahoot about pirates. Please, 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 please. Please, 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 please. <laughs> I made her watch um uh Our Flag Means Death over the very oh, parts my of God. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, we never have dead air now. Yeah, it's That's just banjo. It's just banjo. You can't cut anything out. Would I be the asshole if I tell my friend that his friend is fetishizing him? I skimmed this one, it's rough. Hi, obligatory, this is a throwaway, I'm on mobile, etc. So I, M19, have a best friend, M19, called Avery. He's been my friend since kindergarten and we're tight as hell. He came out as gay when he was 15 and I'm super proud of him and how far he's come. Okay. So we recently met a girl called Sally. Sally is F20. Female and 20. I hate that Reddit terminology so much. Is F20. Is F20, yeah. And she says she's super supportive of the LGBT plus community and shit like that. She's closer to Avery than she is to me, but we're all kind of close. But Avery and I are still closer to each other. 
Avery has a boyfriend, Jackson, and they go out and do stuff and, like, couple stuff and whatever. <laughs> Jackson is bisexual, and here's where it gets weird. Last night, while we were all drunk, Sally confided in me that she thinks it's cool she finally has a, quote, gay bestie, and that it's super sexy when Avery and Jackson make out, and she's touched herself thinking of that. She also told me that since Jackson is bi, she wants to have a threesome with him and Avery, mm -hmm. and maybe make Avery realize girls aren't all that bad. In my opinion, that's pretty fucked up. I haven't talked to Sally since then, and I honestly don't know if I want to be her friend, if this is how she views my friend. Am I the asshole for feeling this way? Would I be the asshole if I tell Avery about this? I feel I'd want to know if I was my friend's walking porno. Yeah, not the asshole. That's fucked up. Tell your friend! <laughs> why did you say that? Ew. Tell yeah. your friend. Weird. Weird. So fucking weird. Apparently, and then they he makes an edit and yes. says, edit. apparently people were not doing what we were doing. Edit. This got more attention than I expected, but let me say, if genders were reversed, a male was masturbating to my lesbian friends, I would also feel the desire to tell them. It's creepy either way. Fuck, it's creepy if it's straight to me. Okay, I'm gonna be real. I feel like the creepy thing is telling that. someone that you're right. jerking off about also your friends. That. yeah, actually. Um, and not just, like, being horny. Being horny is value neutral. Uh, thought crime is not real. Be... Live your best life. That's fucking real. Um, Nobody knows what's going on in your brain except yes. for you. Uh, but when the horniness happening in your brain becomes telling <laughs> your friend that you're horny about your other friends just sort of existing as gay people, real. Uh, that's when it enters creepy territory. Yeah. So don't do that. So don't do don't that. Do that part. Uh, keep that to yourself. Inside thoughts. <laughs> inside, yes. Inside <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Having inside th all kinds of inside inside thoughts are great, but not all of them need to be shared with people. Some of them don't need to be outside Some thoughts. Some of them don't need to be outside <laughs> Plenty of them don't need to be outside thoughts. Yeah, the problem here is not being horny, and it's not even being horny about your friends. I feel like that's pretty normal, also honestly. Neutral. Yeah. That's value neutral, but telling your friend that you're horny about your other two friends... Um, and Makes also it an uncomfortable situation for everybody involved. Saying that you want to uh, convert your gay friend. That part. <laughs> that's fucked up. That's weird. That's weird. Don't do that. Uh, it is... It puts the poster of this comment in a bad situation. That part. Um, and it indicates that you don't really value your friends as friends, but instead as, like, sex objects. Real. Uh, you should be friends with people because you enjoy their company, and not just because you're horny. And to have a, quote, gay bestie. No, yes. I mean, being friends with people just because you're horny is super valid if they know about it, and That's it's a true. mutually consenting message. Yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, it's a very silly post. Um, That's a silly, yeah. Um, we found, I, we reached the problematic. I mean, none of this is the original poster, we're just, like, clowning on Sally. We are quote unquote Sally. Sally. Yeah, well. Yeah. Boo. Also, edited to add. So I messaged her an hour ago, and her sentiment hasn't changed, but she did try and laugh it off. She pressed on the maybe Avery secretly buy <laughs> for a hot okay. minute, and that if the roles were reversed, I'd probably jerk off to it. Okay. Interesting. 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 Well, would you tell them about it? Would you jerk off to it and then tell them? What you jerk off to is your own business, except Unless if you, you tell it. someone, <laughs> and then it's no longer it. your business. Then it's somebody right. else's problem, and hey, that's not good. That's not good. Man. Silly hours. Silly hours. <laughs> Crazy that you can live in a culture as puritanical. Well, I guess I don't know if they're in the U.S. That is fair. But, like, come on. Sally? <laughs> come on, Sally. Get with Sally. it. Sally? <laughs> No, I just mean that feels like such an American name. Oh, no, okay, yeah, that's fair. I got, could you be British and named Sally? No, it's not allowed. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, it's then. It's illegal. Yeah. Solved it. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> there you go, dead air. There you go. None of it. Never again. I feel like this gets more pointed as the episode goes on. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Now we just watch Ava play banjo. Yep. That's the right
rest of the episode. I mean, the episode's basically a show. I like that one. And with that, that I've been JQ. I've been Emma. I've been Ava. You can follow Outright on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the website formerly known as Twitter. You can read our articles at outrightnewsmag.org. That's right, spelled W-R-I-T-E. Good night!